I need to make a valve that automatically turns the air on and off to my air engine so I don't have to. I came up with something I could make with my plasma cutter. I call it a rotary disc valve, which sounds like a real mechanical thing, doesn't it? <laughs> and I since found out that they do actually exist already. Of course they do. But rotary disc valves don't seem common in the world of steam engines. And I think I now know why. There's a series of plates that stack up and can be bolted together. The top one needs attachments fitted for the air or the steam. We tap the holes so ordinary cheap airline fittings could be used, nice. though they needed to be shortened a little. In the middle of this sandwich of plates, there's a disc that is driven round and round by a sprocket and chain. And in that middle disc, there is a slot that variously joins up one pair of holes and then a different pair of holes, letting the air into or out of the piston cylinder. Sounds simple, huh? Tiniest bit of this, or...? Yeah, just a, a smidgen. I mean, we can peel it off again if it really doesn't yeah. make anything better. We assembled it with a sealant for the fixed plates and grease for the rotating disc. <laughs> so far, so <laughs> good. Lovely. One sprocket goes onto the shaft that runs through the valve, and the other goes onto the main flywheel shaft. It needed drilling out a lot, but I don't have the tools for that, so I carefully use my plasma cutter instead. The whole thing is mounted on a back plate which is fixed to the frame. I'd made slots so I can rotate the whole valve assembly until it opens at just the right time for the piston stroke. In other words, to set the timing. This was the part of the design I was most pleased with, that timing this valve should be easy peasy. With the chain in position and the piston and the crank reconnected, it was time to fit some hoses and try it out. I was very excited. You get Epring Jubilees on them or? Doesn't look like it, does it? <laughs> it doesn't, no, to be honest. <laughs> well, this is an experiment. Okay, an experiment in Dini Jubilees. <laughs> Are we just going to plug it in and... Yeah, well, be prepared to take it off again. The problem was, it just didn't work. Apart from that, it was really good. <laughs> but obviously it has to function, and it just didn't. That sad noise in the background is the sound of my compressor giving up, which didn't help. It's been an expensive week. But back to the valve, the problem is simply that too much air squeezes between the plates. I had done my best to get them smooth and flat, but compressed air, and presumably steam too, needs a whole new level of accuracy. I could tighten the plates up more, but then the rotary disc inside will rotate. End of exhaust, yeah? the right. Still? Exhausting, not yet. Yeah. Now, just exhausting. Yeah, that's about right, isn't yeah. it? So why aren't you going round then, you think? I think it's, it's not, it's just losing too much air. 
frustrating because it nearly worked and I still like the design because it's so simple and it's reversible. If anyone with a horizontal polishing machine wants to try it out, I'd love to hear how you get on. After six o'clock, guys, you're not, not stopping today. You're working, <laughs> working through. Now that there's a locomotive. There, there was just a chance that it was going to work. It's very close to Very close. We'll do it another day. <laughs> Lucky we have donkey power and horsepower. Yeah, and electric and motor cars. Anyway, I'll see you Thanks, Andrew. Well, uh, yeah, leave the lights on, I'll be down again for the bus. But anyway, as I say, it didn't work, so I had to abandon that plan. I'm only including it here so you can see that I've not just been sitting around watching the rugby on the telly. Not at all. After a small amount of gnashing of teeth, I set about making a completely different type of valve instead, called a spool valve. I bought some cast iron, not just any old cast iron, but special, very expensive, machining grade cast iron, which coincidentally looks just like old cast iron. And I drilled a hole through a lump of it. I used a new 12mm drill bit and took it very gently. That hole is to accommodate a piece of rod. This is special ground steel, also 12 millimeters wide, completely round. The rod goes in the hole smoothly. And then I drilled a smaller hole right through from the side. And put a thread in there to hold an airline fitting. And I ground a waste into the rod. A bit crude, but I don't think that matters here. This makes a spool shape, hence the name, spool valve. When the waste lines up with the cross hole, then air or steam can flow through. But push the rod either way and the hole closes up. Nice and easy. Mm -hmm. Except when I connected it to some serious air pressure, it became obvious that, again, the valve was too leaky. <laughs> it's supposed to turn the air off and on. Instead, it's, it's on and then really on. Hmm. Luckily, Will has a 12mm reamer, so we had to go at making a more precise hole in a new piece of iron. First with a 11.5mm drill bit, and then with the 12mm reamer, which should leave a clean, smooth finish. Now I'm using cast iron because if this engine becomes a steam engine, then these valves should still work. Steel, on the other hand, would just corrode away in no time, apparently, and obviously plastic would just melt. So that rules out most water and airline valves. We ran out of travel on the drill, so we had to wind up the table, and between this and that and everything else, this hole didn't work either. Too much gap between the rod and the barrel. So... We tried my woodworking lathe and a new piece of iron. How fast can I go then? Rob? Just steal for it, I suppose. Sadly, it really isn't accurate enough for the job and we ended up milling an even bigger hole this time. Hmm, interesting, but completely useless. Oh, man. Hmm, so then we went to Will's workshop and used his proper lathe, which I probably should have done in the first place. It's a lovely lathe, Will. <laughs> yeah, is it? Oh, I'm just a dancing. Oh yeah, 
this one. And that's clutch maybe, down. Maybe not the fastest. There. Pick a gear, any gear. Alright. Still not perfect, but good enough, I think. Ooh. <laughs> so that's a good sound. But it does make me wonder how those early engineers made spool valves that worked, or any other kind of steam valve. What clever chaps they must have been. Right then, I now have two valves, which turn on the air, and mostly turn it off again. Now I need to activate them mechanically in time with the piston stroke. This time I'm using cams on the main shaft. I made them so I could adjust them against a fixed plate. Actually I spent quite a while trying to figure out the best shape and then the right size of these cams and the push rods that they activate and setting them up in the right place and at the right angle and holding the valves in position too but also allowing for some sort of adjustment of the valves and then adding springs so the push rods return to base each stroke and the spool rods don't just stay out all the time so it was all a bit fiddly and it took ages and my rotary disc valve was much simpler One valve should allow the air into the cylinder and then stop it. And the other should allow the air out again and then stop it. Yes, in theory, I could have combined the two, but getting one to work properly was tricky enough. Now, I know that the cams are still not right. They are both open for too long, so I'll need to redraw the shape and cut new ones. But this is what happened when I put some air in. Not too bad for the 27th attempt, is it? Of course, it needs lots of improvement, but at least I know now how to do that. <laughs>